Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be showing you how to make this origami from the crisp pad. I'm not gonna be focused too much on shaping as you can see, <laughs> but I'm be focusing, I'll be focusing on how you can pre-crease the crisp pattern and how you can collapse it and like how you can go from there to the actual shape of the origami. Okay, so yeah, let's start. So lately my tutorials have been focused on maybe more complex origami, so I want to take time to actually um, do an easy one and hopefully get you to starting collapsing your own crease patterns. Now I'm not gonna do a series about that because I believe that there are a lot of them out there so what I wanted to do here is uh, show you how to fold this simple origami from the crease pattern. So the crease pattern is really simple and I'll post a link in the description for it so I'll, this will be a more uh, detailed and in-depth tutorial so in case you're new to crease patterns uh, stick around. So yeah, first thing we're going to do, so we're going to get uh, a paper, piece of paper. So I'm using a square that's about 30 centimeters and I recommend it not lower than that or not much lower than that. Uh, regarding thickness of the paper, well, it's, this is not a very complex model, so um, as long as it's not printing paper, you should be fine. Okay, so I don't have the crease pattern right in front of me, I have it on my computer, but if you're new to crease patterns, I recommend you print it out and have it on, on your side. I'll have uh, an image here on the, on the corner showing what exactly am I doing. But the first thing we notice is that the crease pattern is based on a, on a grid. So most crease patterns, or a lot of crease patterns, are based on grids, uh, which means that you have to make a grid first and then crease um, all the remaining creases and then actually collapse it. Uh, so the first step when it comes to making uh, this type of origamis, which are called box split, um, I believe, sorry if I'm wrong, um, is to make the actual grid. Now I've already counted the grid uh, and it's 24 by 24. So in order to do that grid, what we have to do is firstly divide in three then each, uh, then divide this, that three, those three parts into two, and then into two again, and then finally into two again. Okay, so we'll have three units, then six, then 12, and then 24. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Okay, so let me show you how to divide a paper into three equal parts. So what you need to do is first make a diagonal. You only need to make one. I've already made this one because I used it to cut the paper, okay? make a diagonal and then you're going to do um, you're going to fold the paper in half okay make sure everything is aligned and crease sharply okay so unfold now we're going to do an auxiliary fold. So we're gonna make a line from this point here to this point. Uh, sorry, actually, let's let me just hold the paper. Um, yeah, I actually need to do the other. So first, make the other um, the other line as well, uh, the other horizontal line. That's easier. This is all. This will also be part of the grid, so you can crease it. Okay, so you should have something like this. Okay, so now, as I was saying, you're gonna make a line from this point to this point. And you have to make sure that that line crosses the diagonal. Since you, you only have one diagonal, for example, if you hold it like this, that line doesn't cross this diagonal because we haven't creased it and it's not necessary. You can if you want, but it's only necessary to, to actually collapse one, uh, to actually crease one. So yeah, so you're going to make a line from this point to this point. So the way you do that, so you can just pinch here, okay, at the intersection, and then just hold the paper here, and then you can just swivel until you reach this corner, okay? So you don't have to crease all the way. All you need to do is make a, a small 
crease here where the line intersects the diagonal, okay? And you can unfold. If it makes it easier for you, you can just crease this line. Um, yeah. So now what you're going to do is actually make an horizontal line um, that passes through this intersection. So fold this part up, align the middle line, and just fold till you see this intersection right here. And just crease. And fold. Now rotate the paper. And you're gonna fold this edge to the, to the crease you just made. As you can see now, we have a paper divided into three equal parts. So one, two, three. This is divided into two because we folded the middle line. Now to do it, so we have made on this direction, but we have to make it on this direction as well. So just rotate the paper and you can do the same thing. So just fold this line here, passing through this intersection and aligning, um, aligning these lines here. If, if you've made everything correct, this, um, this crease here will actually uh, connect to the intersection between this crease and the diagonal. Okay, unfold, rotate, and do the same thing. Now, leave, put, uh, line this edge with this one. Sorry if the paper makes these noises, the texture is kind of weird. <laughs> All right, now you have made a three by three grid. Okay, so what you have to do now is uh, keep on dividing until you reach 24 by 24. Let me do it the six by six and then you just repeat the process, okay? So to do a six by six, all you have to do is just bring this edge to this one And then do the same thing on this top part here. Okay, and you should have to uh, crease this part, uh, this this section divided uh, as well. But since this is the middle line, you don't have to do it because it's already done. So you can just do the same thing on this direction now. Okay, so you have a six by six grid now. What you have to do now is divide each of these sections into uh, two and these ones as well. And then once you've done that, you have to repeat the process until you have a four by four grid. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that a bit faster and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I've done a 12 by 12 grid. Now, if you already done the grid, that's okay. I'm just gonna give you some uh, tips. So instead of actually now folding this edge to this one, thus creating it a 24th, a 24th uh, the division, you can actually turn the paper around 
and since these are all mountain folds you can just uh, align for example this edge with the next one and then you create again the same division so this is the same thing as just making all mountain folds so it's up to you I'm just gonna do it this way Okay, so you should have a grid like this. Okay, so 24 by 24. And now we can actually start pre creasing the remaining lines of the crease pattern. So honestly, there's no order. You can just start anywhere. You can just follow my lead. What I'm gonna do is just collapse uh, like this part here for uh, pre crease, sorry, this part here first uh, and then this line. So. Uh, I don't have the crease pattern here, but I'll have, a, like I said, an image showing what lines I'm talking about. So let's start here with a line, this line here. Um, so I can actually zoom a little bit. Okay, so if you take a look at the crease pattern, you can see that there's a line from this corner here, diagonally, so 45 degree angle, and it um, its length is 4 units and when I mean unit I mean a grid unit so you can see here that from this point to this point is 1 unit and then from this point to this one is 2 units so we have a line that's 4 units which means it's up to 1, 2, 3, 4 okay, to here so you can do this line here and the way you can do that is, uh, th this line is actually the diagonal. Uh, so you can just, uh, so you already know how to, to make the diagonal. Uh, but in this case, you only need to, um, you only need to crease these four units, okay? So, to this point here, okay? Just like that. So we have this line right here, which I will color so you can see better. Okay, and now you can see that from this point you have another 45 degree angle, but in this direction. And you can see that it goes to the edge of the paper, but it should be again four units. Okay, so align from this point and then just count four units diagonally. So one, two, three, four and you do that. The way you can do that is make a diagonal. So fold this flap up and make a diagonal passing through this point here. Okay, just align this. Like that, and then just fold this part here. Unfold. Okay, so now you can look at the crease pattern and you can see that this pattern repeats two more times and if you take a look at it it's always the same pattern because this pattern here is uh, so these two diagonals are eight units um, and if you multiply eight by three you get 24 which is the total uh, grid so eight plus eight plus eight you get to the end of the grid okay so now you can go from this point another four units to this point and here you can just take this top corner and just align it with this line here. And again just fold four units. this point that way again you can just fold this part up now this
this one you can again take the top corner and align it with this line okay and the last one it should be also the diagonal uh, which in my case it's already creased but I'll just crease it anyway so you can see okay, and let me mark it okay so we've done this part here okay or mostly and now you can actually do what you did here but on this side of the paper so I'm gonna do that just a bit faster it's exactly the same thing so the, um, the origami is symmetrical so what you do on one side, you have to do on the other side as well. Okay, perfect now. So we have done some lines. Okay, so what we can do now, so only have to, the lines we have to do now are just here in this middle part. And as you can see by the crease pattern, there are only 45 degree lines apart from the grid lines. Okay, so all the lines that we need to do are 45 degree angle lines, so it's quite simple. Okay, so the next lines we're going to do are gonna be these lines here in the middle and if you take a look at the crease pattern um, they don't actually start from the, the midline so this is in my paper this is the midline and they don't actually start from here but instead they start from um, two units uh, to the left and to the right of the crease pattern um, another way to um, to view this is if you take a look at this point you can safely assume that the point that's uh, on the left of this point is around two units so you could also make those lines starting from here but I think it's easier if you start from the edge of the paper um, so yeah we have this line the middle line here you can see on the grease pattern and then you have another line and then on the next one you'll have a line starting from this point and again diagonal with four units length okay so let's do that so you have the middle line here you skip one and then on the next one you're just gonna fold it just gonna fold it like that and again do a four unit diagonal okay up to this point here unfold mark that okay and now from this point you're going to go on a diagonal along uh, this direction but this time you're actually going to go past um, the middle line so as you can see you have a line that goes all the way to the middle line okay so again this is the middle line and then it starts uh, it connects with um, some squares that are here but we'll do that later so what we're going to do now is actually from this point make a diagonal all the way to the middle line okay so you can fold here like 
that and you can align this edge with this one. Okay, and you only need to fold from this point to the middle line. So in case you, you don't know where the middle line is, um, just fold it somewhere around it. Okay, doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, like that. As you can see, I went a little bit overboard, but that's okay. So let me just crease that as well. Uh, I mean, mark that. Okay. And now we can do the same thing on this side, okay? So again, from the middle line, you go one, two, okay? Then foot edge to that line. Again, four units. And from this point to the middle line. Okay, so if everything is right, all right, so you, you should have these two points should be uh, two units apart. Okay, and on the same, on the other side as well. And now what we're going to do is actually flip the paper, I mean, rotate the paper uh, and do the same thing on this. Okay, so we, we did this part here, now do the exact same thing here. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that a bit faster. perfect okay now actually on this side you also have some line here in the edge which are just diagonals with one unit long so you can just um, fold the paper and just fold them like that since they are just small lines maybe it's easier to do it like that Okay, so these two lines. And now there's only one thing, uh, some prerequisites here in the middle area, but they are quite simple as well. So if everything is okay, um, you have these two points here and they should be four units apart. Now, if you look at the crease pattern, uh, the way they are connected is you have like a series of zigzag folds uh, that connect them. So you have like two squares here. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. So the way we do that is first of all, you these lines that uh, join at the at the middle line, you're gonna uh, continue them one extra unit. Okay, so let's do that. So just crease one more unit on each of them, like that. This one as well. This should be easier because. And uh, this line is already pre-creased, so that should be easy. 
and do the same thing with the top ones okay that one and also this one okay so the lines I just did were this two and these two okay and now all we need to do so all we need to do is join this point with this point and then this point with this one so this these two are already connected because they are connected by the diagonal line which I had made before to cut the square so I don't need to do that one but in order to do the other one it's the same thing so you can just pick up the paper and just pinch on the two points and then just make a crease like that okay just like that okay so I guess regarding the crease pattern we are done all of the all of the crease pattern is pre creased there are a lot of lines on the crease pattern but they all they are all grid lines so everything is done and so let me just put it back the way it was so this part should be facing uh, up okay and I guess we can start collapsing now if you are uh, if you have some experience folding crease patterns or at least you know what they are and how to collapse them I suggest you just try this on your own even if you don't you can just try this on your own because this is a really simple crease pattern and if you don't try it you'll never know if you could do it so um, just take a look at the crease pattern that I show you and take into account that red lines mean uh, mountain folds and uh, black lines mean um, valley folds so yeah so red mountain black valley folds and just try to collapse this origami okay so in case you in case you don't want to try it um, I'm just gonna show you right now so but if you do just pause the video and if you're having trouble just come back to it okay so yeah let's let's collapsing uh, let's start collapsing I'll try to collapse this in the in the most intuitive way um, but there is not really any uh, because this is not a tutorial by the diagram so yeah anyways what we're going to do first so the first thing we're going to do is actually make a mountain fold here on this line so this is the one this is the first second third this is the fourth um, fourth line okay so mountain fold here you can just fold uh, like that and then do the same thing on the top one so the fourth counting starting from the top mountain fold okay and you can just fold everything in half along the, the middle line okay so you should have something like this so what we're going to do now is actually collapse fold these parts here so you're going to fold inside reverse fold these corners okay where um, so where the creases are okay so mountain fold here and there and then just valley fold here in the middle okay just like that and do the same thing for the remaining three corners okay once you've done on this side you can turn around and do it on this one okay nice so you should have something like this okay let me just put it back where it was like that so this part is facing you it doesn't really matter which um, which part is facing you so if this is a top edge or if it's the bottom edge because um, the paper is symmetrical or mostly symmetrical uh, both vertically as horizontally so it's not a problem okay so what we're going to do now is you're going to open here okay 
and you're just gonna make um, these mountain folds here. So you're gonna make a mountain fold on this line and the mountain fold here as, as well as here. So the same thing we did here, kind of reverse folding, but you're going to do the same thing on this side, okay? And you, then you're going to make a mountain fold here. Okay, so we're gonna do this all at once. So that's right. So first of all, I'm gonna do mountain fold here, okay? And then mountain fold here as well. Just like that, okay? And you can just, um, you can just do a valley fold here, okay? Just close this like that. Okay, and do the same thing on this side. This will create, uh, as you can see, it starts creating this mountain fold here. So you do the same thing here. And just close this down. Just like that. Okay. Now you're going to turn around the paper and do the exact same thing, okay? So mountain fold here. As well. And on this side. Okay, just like that. Okay, now you can just fold this one uh, to the left and fold the other one to the left or to the right, depending. Um, but you can just fold this like that, kind of flattening uh, the paper. Flattening, yeah. So yeah, you should have something like that. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do now is fold this flap up, okay? And now we're going to do a series of open sinks. So we have to sink in this, um, this part here uh, with the creases that you already made. So you're going to make a mountain fold here, then a valley, then a mountain. So this is basic uh, sink fold, so it should be straightforward. So yeah, you're going to open up this flap. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you do first. They're all um, they're all the same. So you're gonna open up this part and you're just gonna make a mountain fold here. Okay, and then just keep creasing it. Like that. you make this um, rectangular shape okay and then you're gonna make a valley fold on the next ones okay and at the same time it might be easier for you to just make um, this part here up, go up, okay. Like that. Okay, make sure all the lines are correctly recreased, and then you can just crease everything. And but not, but you still have to sink this part. Okay, so just open and just do mount folds. If you open up, it should look like this. Okay, now do the same thing with all of the uh, remaining three flaps. So let's do this one first. So again, open this part.
Um, this might be easier for you or harder, depends on what paper you're using because some papers just um, stick to the correct orientation easier than others. I um, don't know if that makes sense for you, but, but yeah, so it also helps if the orientation of your lines is already in the correct position, which mine isn't, but that's okay. You don't need to worry about that right now. Just something that may help you in the future. Okay. Nice. Okay, so another one done. So you should have this, right? Now you can just turn around and do the exact same thing. Okay, so fold this flap up and open up this part Okay, just one more. Okay, good. So once you're done, make sure you grease everything and make sure that um, these parts here, so here inside, they tend to crimp wrongly. So make sure yours are in the correct position. Okay, they should all look like this. Okay. And now we can move on to the next step. Let me just zoom a bit. Okay. So the next step, what we are going to do is, so for now we can actually just fold this flap down again. Okay, like that. Make sure you crimp, uh, you crease this part, sorry. And now what we're going to do is, so we're going to make a valley fold on this line and on this one as well. Okay, and then a mountain fold here and a mountain fold there. So basically we're gonna crimp this part here underneath this layer. Okay, let me show you. 
So we're going to open up a bit here, okay? And you're going to make mountain fold here. Okay, like that. And then another mountain fold here. And as you're doing that, you're going to push this part here inside, okay? So valley fold on that part. Okay, like that. And then just do, just close everything. Okay. So you should have something like this. Now do the same thing for the remaining um, four parts. So on the fold here. Okay, so you should have um, this thin down part in comparison to this one. Okay. So, yeah, you're going to do the exact same thing on this side, okay? So, fold this flap down, open here. One more. Okay. Perfect. We're almost there. And there's just one more step you need to do, and which is the hardest one, I guess, but it's not hard, okay? It's pretty much the same thing. Okay, so what we need to do, as you can see here, we have some lines here that are not uh, creased yet, so we need to do them. And what we're going to do is, so we're going to make so if you open here and look it from the side, you can see that we're going to make, so we have these two, uh, let me just hold it like that, so it's uh, easier for you to see. Okay, so we have these two mountain folds, right? And from there, they, they cross this, uh, line here and then from this point you're gonna do a mountain fold here on these two so connecting these two lines here like that and next you're going to do so valley fold valley fold valley fold and then mountain fold mountain fold mountain fold okay so the, the, the trick with this part is you need to do it um, at the same time on both sides so that's why it's a bit harder, but um, you'll manage. So what's maybe, I mean, yeah, maybe let's do something, let's do something a little bit different. So what we're going to do is actually make first, uh, we're going to make this um, mountain fold, okay? So we have a mountain fold here and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so mountain fold, like that, okay, crease only to about here, do the same thing on the other side, 
mountain fold and then you just hold each in um, one hand and you just try to pin try to separate them here so once you get here you'll see that there's this square here and what we're going to do is just pull uh, your fingers apart and as you can see it will kind of um, put in the shape of the square okay so again hold here and just pull your fingers apart and then you can just join these two parts together okay so do the same thing here okay so mountain fold on this on this one on the other side as well if it helps you can just put your finger inside and try to uh, push push the paper okay so here just keep hold at the top and just pull together okay and you can just close everything like that okay so it's starting to get some shape we're almost there so now uh, you can see now he this is the part I was talking about so we have to make these lines here so you're just gonna hold here okay so yeah as I was saying all you have to do now is open here in the middle where you have these lines here and you're just gonna make um, some uh, so a, a mountain fold here, then a valley fold, and then a mountain fold. Okay, so mountain fold here, like that, and then valley fold, and a mountain fold here. Okay, so kind of closing this part out. Okay, and do the same thing on this side. Okay, almost done. One small detail. Um, so on on either side, don't know which one. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so on either side, in each of them, or, or in one of them, you have these small uh, lines here. Okay, so this one. So if you open one of them, hasn't, and the other one does not have. Okay, so in my case this one and what you're going to do is just make so open this part a bit and just make a mountain fold here here and here okay like that and then just do um, two valley folds so one here and one here just folding this part Okay, and you've collapsed, collapsed the crease pattern. Well done. <laughs> Don't know if it's your first, but if it is, congratulations. And uh, now, before we start uh, shaping the origami, I want you to uh, look at what you did and try to evaluate like what part, what part of this origami is the part of the spider. Okay, so that shouldn't be that hard. And I also want you to think about if this origami or if this crease pattern is a good crease pattern or not. If it's efficient, um, if it's realistic or not. So think about that, write it in the comments and I'll just comment on what you write. Um, it's good to, to do that in order for you to get some better understanding on how crease pattern works and, and stuff like that. Uh, either way, I guess we can start shaping. So I'm just going to show you now what each part uh, represents and how you can position them 
in the correct place. So if you don't want to know that and want to try for yourself, just don't skip or pause the video, I guess. Uh, so yeah, so obviously this part is going to be the fangs, okay? So this is the head and this is the, the booty. Um, so, and yeah, this, this flap right here, we can just hide it here. And then you have um, the four legs, okay? So you can just fold this part in half like that. So in half, not but just fold it like that so we can see it better. So you have on each side four points. Now a spider actually has five on each side. Although the, the two, the front two are not uh, called legs, they are called pedipalps, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so which means that uh, this spider actually is missing a leg or the pedipalps. Now the way that the origami or the, so the origami is, so it only has three legs and then it has the pedipalp, so we can do that. Um, so yeah, so the first one is going to be a pedipalp and then the, the, the other three, so these three are going to be the legs and the same thing for the other side. Um, Okay, so the first thing we can do is actually try to position them in sort of the correct position. So this part, this leg is going to be kind of more um, apart from the other one. So what we can do is just open it like this and we can actually fold it so like this, okay? So make a um, belly fold here, mop and fold there and just collapse here, and just grease here and do the same thing on the other side that okay so now we can start working um, let's first put the legs in the in the correct position so we we're gonna have one like that one like that and one like that sort of so uh, it, it depends you can change it obviously so this first one is going to be the foremost leg so you can do uh, something actually even better so instead of making uh, this mountain fold here you can just make it slightly bent okay just like so a bit above with an angle and that will just put the legs um, in this uh, angle okay do the same thing the other one okay and the, um, and then you can just so the pedipalps or the front legs you can just fold them up um, on this thing so you turn around and then you can just fold them up like that honestly I bet you can tell but I'm kind of making things up as I'm going just be and, and this is usually how I fold my crease or how I shape my crease patterns and this is totally normal. Um, there's no correct way of shaping an origami, especially from the crease pattern. So you can shape it however you want. Um, okay, so now we have this part here. My paper is getting a bit too thick for this, but I'll try my best to show you. Um, so yeah, we now have the three legs here. So we can kind of push one um, out and then push one the other this one up so kind of spreading them and you can try to just um, try to um, get them to stay in this position like kind of crimping the paper here underneath this part um, the other thing we can actually do is so the legs are way too thick for an actual leg so what we can do first is kind of narrowing them down and the easiest way is to just fold it in half okay so we can fold one leg in half just like that okay and then we can fold the next one so 
in order to actually like try to get this to collapse in a decent way so this one the middle one you can actually open in the middle and fold the narrow the flaps inside the leg okay so just like that and then you can kind of squash this part here okay this triangle here Okay, do the same thing on this side and this one you can just yeah this one you can do the same as so open in the middle fold the flaps in and then this the pedipulp you can just fold like the, the first one you did Okay, so this will create kind of a mess here, but what you have to do now is first close these middle legs, you can just close them, fold them in, in half. Oh, my paper ripped. Nice. This one as well. I'm just trying to close this. Doesn't really matter how this part turns out, like this part here, if it's all crimped up, as long as you can hide it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, I guess they are kind of narrowed down now. See, you can, so if I was, if I were to shape this, like actually shape it and not just fold it somewhere, I would glue this part together. And as you can see, I my paper here. I would glue these together, okay? I would, and I would actually glue them now before actually curving the, them. No, actually, sorry, no, the other, the other way, sorry. I would just put them in the curved position, like leg position. I will show you to do that. I'll show you how to do that. And then I would curve them. Uh, so the first thing we can do, so you can obviously do the same thing on the other side. Um, the first thing you can actually do is um, so this part right here it's not really pointy right let me zoom a bit so the, the tip of the legs are not really pointy so what you can do is just make something like this kind of narrowing, narrowing it and you can do the same thing for the other one so you can just fold this inside here as well here I'm only showing you like the basics of the shaping I will probably do the rest off camera because that would be a bit boring for you to see um, because I would have to glue st stuff and it's just boring to watch people glue stuff honestly at least that's what I think um, and yeah, now they're kind. They are thinner, right? Now what you can actually do is give them a curved shape. Now, in order to do that, you can actually crimp. Um, you can just crimp the legs, and how you actually hold it like that. And how you do that is so you open here. So the first one, the back leg. So you open it in the middle. Okay, here and then you can actually use the grid lines to do this so you have a grid line here you're just gonna make a mountain fold on that one and then a valley fold but a valley fold but with these two it's kind of hard to explain but it's easier for you to see it so a valley fold here approximately like crimping the paper is basically just just the cream Okay, like that. 
and as you can see it starts to get um, curved oh sorry yeah. and then you can do the same thing on this one and now you have a better leg right so you can actually do like the oops the inverse now on the foot so you open in the middle and you kind of flatten the, f the foot mm -hmm. like that okay so you can do the same thing for all of the other legs okay and for the and including the belly bulb actually so you can do the same thing for all of them um, now what else can we do so as you can see the um, the booty the butts of the tarantula is actually really big of the spider actually is really big compared to the legs so usually a spider is like this length but the paper goes all the way here so we obviously don't need that much paper so what we can do is try to hide it um, like this or even more like this and now it kind of looks better and this is why I was saying you that the paper is not the crease pattern is not very efficient because all of this paper so including this flap this flap is not used for anything and uh, all of this paper is just being hidden and it's not being used so it's kind of a waste uh, of paper uh, but anyways that's not the point the point here is to actually show you how to collapse this so yeah you could actually do this uh, just tie the paper like that and then it gets to a reasonable size right so if I let go of this this won't hold I need to glue it obviously uh, and I need to do the same thing with the other legs so now the head what you can do is so these are the fangs so what you can do is just fold this in half like that and this one as well and then you can kind of separate them so they are not they are together now like that you can kind of separate them so you can fold them even so one more time in half or just um, or just push the just squash them a bit so you can just separate them okay something like that um, yes and I guess I guess that's it and um, what I'm gonna do now is actually shape this uh, with more care <laughs> and so you so I can show you what it looks like in the end and then I will uh, let you know like what I did extra this, uh, from the things that I showed you here so you can actually do it as well okay so see you in a second okay so I'm midway through shaping but I actually found a better way to shape um, to shape this uh, this leg and the belly pulp as well and yes this one as well so this one is as I showed you, but this one, what you can actually do, since this is uh, like a different orientation from this one, so in this one, this part is a mountain fold. So what you can do is actually first reverse fold it as close to the body as you can, like folding this, um, the leg up, okay. Okay, something like that and then you can just do the same thing so just crimp here somewhere doesn't really matter okay and you can crimp again um, if you want I'm just gonna um, put the feet uh, you could just crimp the feet actually Okay, so something like that, and uh, for the petty pulp, you can do something like that as well. So you can actually just so here's how I did this one. So you can do 
this part so we can reverse the orientation of this one and just to Anyway, this part doesn't really matter because it's going to be a bit hidden, but... Okay, man, I guess. This is obviously not my best shaping, but I'm not too concerned about that. It's not the goal of this tutorial. Yeah, something like that, and then obviously you can just crimp here. Okay, I guess, I guess it works. Um, so all the legs are done, I guess I need, so here's how it looks from the back, uh, from the bottom, sorry. Yeah, from the back, and now I still have to just like glue this part in like that, and yeah, you have a spider. <laughs> it's not the prettiest spider, but it is one. Um, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna glue some stuff here, but this is the shape that's going to be in the end. Um, yeah. Okay, so I kind of glued the body, and the paper is not that good, so it's kind of it's starting to rip here, and it, the glue doesn't really stick, but you get the idea. Um, you can actually arrange the legs and also glue the legs, uh, so you get you have a spider, as you can see, I've put glue here, but this doesn't really stick. Um, so I guess there's nothing really I can do. Um, honestly, I guess that's it. Uh, obviously, it's not my best shaping. It wasn't intended to. I just wanted to show you how to, how you can actually um, crease a crease pattern and collapse a crease pattern and how you can go from there to the shaping, obviously you can do a better job than I do, than I did here, uh, I didn't take that much time shaping it. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and it was useful, and I'll see you in the next video.